Hi friends, Santos Bonacci here and today on this beautiful summer's day here in Melbourne uh, we're going to share some uh, spiritual no knowledge and hopefully some wisdom <laughs> and uh, I'd like to introduce firstly Jagger Jagger here. Um, Jagger, Jagger is um, one of the prominent teachers of spirituality and syncretism in, uh, in Australia amongst the uh, Aboriginal people. I'm so happy to have Jagger Jagger here with us. Thanks brother. Thanks oh, a million. Enjoy. Thank yep. you. Thank you for Wonderful. Wonderful. We spoke just uh, like three days ago mm -hmm. and um, at the uh, CLRA meeting and it was great to connect because we spoke mostly about syncretism mm -hmm. and of course the Aboriginal people know the original true philosophy and so I'm really happy to have you and of course I'd like to introduce Rob Halford and we're going to share in some, um, yep. some knowledge and information hopefully that will be of benefit to mankind. Thanks guys. So um, you know my thought uh, Jagger Jagger in particular, in particular with yourself is I know that um, a lot of great foremost leading Aboriginal people now are starting to reveal a lot of information and um, knowledge of the past, whereas they were a little bit silent in the past. For example, the Hunter Valley uh, tribe there that have preserved alive the uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs there, and Steve Strong is bringing that out, how um, you know, now they're starting to talk because they realise that now is the time. How do you feel about that? Well, with the, um, like the, old, the old languages that have been carved into certain places, particularly caves like the um, Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs, um, and there's a couple of key locations around Australia, probably seven locations where they exist. And not only do they exist there, but there should be other material on the same site that have um, that help to translate what what that language is, is talking about because truth uh, is not just a, a word that's written down and, and people apply uh, in, in sentences and, and <coughs> when they especially about uh, spiritual belonging and spiritual presence is hard to to see what is truth and what isn't true, mm. when when there's so much debauchery and so much um, bullshit, yeah, a lot of people with that, uh, superficial ideas coming in mm. to to sell themselves to a movement or an idea. Um, firstly, I've never been for sale, and uh, secondly, they've never made me an offer yet. <laughs> but, I, I heard you weren't for sale, but you're for rent for the buddy. <laughs> <laughs> not cheap, though. Yeah, not cheap. But um, great, great truth comes with great responsibility, and uh, the more truth that you that you know and understand. Well, one of the greatest things I learned about truth is the fact that firstly you must accept it mm. before you even want to understand it because you'll battle all your life if you try to understand an uh, idea or concept that you haven't yet accepted. Because mm. you, you haven't taken it in to your, to your spirit and to all the cells of your body and, and uh, we, you take it into your body, into your spirit and reverse engineer it. So you know the guts of, of yeah. that information. So once it's fully accepted, you get a, such a great understanding of it, then you can put it back out and denounce it if you like. Or keep it as a truth and use it as a truth and build mm. on it. But acceptance comes before understanding. And acceptance really means surrendering to, sure. the, to the universe and to, uh, to a higher power that's, that we know is real and we can feel it in our lives. And uh, people give it all different names. But the, the more you accept openly, the more you come to understand, and the more you come to understand, the, the universe keeps funneling more and more and more into you as well, as a, um, as a, as a portal, or like a USB stick, something in your computer. Mm. It's ready to be loaded because it's compatible. So once your spirit it becomes understanding and accepting and understanding of the universe, it becomes compatible. 
and then you get the download and the constant flow of, of information that that uh, words can't describe or or that no humans can denounce even. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so um, So true. Yeah, so it's um so I've been speaking a particular truth for twenty years, particularly about my tribal lands. And I'm trying to teach um, black and white alike about the way we interact with the world and poisoned by association as in the government and those who believe they have a right or a, a design over us or rights to own us or any, mm. any property matter of us. Yep. And I've been trying to teach uh, particularly uh, black people, Aboriginal people, firstly don't sign nothing. I've been talking to people all over the country, don't sign nothing. Just put away the, the pen and and fight another way at the moment because you're not going to get what you seek by interacting with them. Yeah. In fact, you're going to get shafted very hard and, and led even further away from freedom. Yeah. And this is about sure. to happen in, in Northern Territory at the moment. They're organising a, a law meeting of uh, a lot of Aboriginal elders from all over Australia, they're going to have this out near the rock in within a couple of weeks, I believe. What are they going to do? They're going to drag them all out to that stinking heat and kill them, are they? Because mm. this is what it sounds like. It sounds like it's a uh, plot. Mm. Not sound like, smells like. It's it To me, it is a plot. Because mm. my intuition, my heart said so. so. I've been trying to contact the organisers. One of them is, is Michael Henson, I believe, who's involved and try and put a stop to it. Okay. Um, or put a stop to the law people turning up there to tell them that they're actually been in, entrapped. Yeah. Why don't we go? Well, you know, I'm too poor. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, my arguments with, with government and organisations over the past, particularly decade, I've been slowly wiped out of the system and, and I used to make my money by teaching uh, Aboriginal history and and I would ent- entwine the history of the heart deep into cultural knowledge. Mm. So people thought they were just getting basic survival skills, but each each time I had teaching something, I still entwined the truth from a, from a heart space about that particular uh, idea of life, so they get it more. Yeah. And one of the um, questions I used to ask school children, and I used to love asking this to primary school kids, was, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll put my hand up too to the kids, like, so we're on equal stance, so it's not, they not me just doing a talk. <clears throat> Pardon me. But I'll put my hand up, and, and the kids will say yes. I say, oh, kiddies, what's, what's the most savage animal in all the world? And you get all your answers, your lions, tigers, sharks. Crocodiles. Yep. And I, I'd get down on my knees in front of them and stand up and raise my hands. I said, sorry, children, but it's us. Yep. We are the savages on our earth, human beings. Yep. No one on earth, no creatures on earth have got a design like we have. Yep. Um, and our Historic. design does place us above the animals in a, in a way, but only in a responsibility way that we must... Re- True not disregard them, we must regard all living hmm. things. We're the only animals with the ability to extinct life completely on the planet too. Yeah, or None save it. other animals can. Or save it. Or save it, yeah. Or save it, yeah. So, and I asked this question of one of the schools once, it was a poor school, no, more in the sports is primary school. Uh, I think it was the Basin Primary School. So I asked the kids, what's the most savage animal in the world, kids, and, and the group was uh, silent. I thought this was a bit odd, so I thought I'd better keep talking and keep the group moving and one blonde-headed, blue-eyed kid in the middle of the group put his hand up and I said, yes, son. He, sa- he said, we are. The kid was about grade four or something. And I actually got teary-eyed and I didn't know what to say to the group. I just said, yes, you know, what me, I yes, that's right, son. So he's like nine and, or um, ten for the viewers. Yeah, well, yeah, grade four or five would be, yeah, nine or ten-year-old. Yeah. 
who answered that question correctly where most adults couldn't. Yep. Because huh? they haven't they haven't had all the bullshit shoved down their throat and been indoctrinated yet. No. They don't, they don't know any better. No. Yeah. So it was a, for about a five year period I invested lots of these great seeds of hope into these children. And I know that they're out there, thousands of these kids that I, I planted that seeds into that. Um, and I told them too, I said, in the future, just disregard everything you told about our world. And you guys can help change it. You guys can help make policies yep. to, to save it rather than destroy it like our present generation. And uh, the education system got rid of me very quickly. Yeah, I wonder why that would be. Mm. Mm. Let's take about four nanoseconds to consider all the options here. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty obvious. They didn't like it at all. It's threatening. Yeah. yeah. It threatens uh, the establishment because they don't want consciousness. It's, there's a war against consciousness. Yeah. It's deliberate. Yeah. Of course. And um, sad, we see that in every level. How, um, how do you think we're going right now? Because obviously um, the whole world is astir with, you know, with new kind of consciousness, new kind of hope. What do you see? Well, I, I think, um, well, I, I know there's, there's probably a time in the future where hope is going to uh, raise. I did the, hot, the idea of it. I don't think that, uh, as in the Western communities, a lot of them seem to think they don't need much hope because things are okay. Mm. Right? Yeah. That's mainly further up the ladder. Yeah. Down at our level in society, we know better. Yeah, and uh, more and more people, uh, we are in a time of great manifestation. True story. Uh, we're yeah. at that, the crossroads, and I think oh, yeah. the clock has already hit midnight. I don't think that we're in the 11th hour anymore. No. I think we're actually on, on midnight. Yep. And it's, um, it's really time for people to uh, have a look at where they sit in the world with their, yeah. their heart space. Yep. And, and forget the headspace for now because, um, well, really, where has the headspace got anyone in our world? Have a look. Not very far. Have a head. look out there. Yeah. That's where it's got us. Yeah. And, and more so in, a, in, in danger, in, in the shit, in, a, in places where people shouldn't be put. Yeah. And that all comes from thinking too much, I believe. Yes, yes for sure. Instead of uh, acting upon a, uh, a truer ideal and keeping things simple as well. People keep harassing me why I'm so poor. And I tell them, <laughs> well, it's, it's a, sort of a choice, but it is. It's my choice to, to speak a particular way that causes humans to question themselves. And people who don't want to question themselves won't talk to me and won't employ me or won't give me jobs, you know, so. Yeah. It's, um, but on the same token, to find poor. Well, if I'm poor, um, well... Because they're saying you haven't got money. Yeah, but what yeah. you've got's worth more than money. Especially oh, yeah. considering it's not even money. Yeah. Well, financially poor, guys, for put a world out there. Yeah. Um, because you ain't poor in the other ways. No. No, no, well, I've been financially poor. Yeah. And, yep. and that, I've argued with the tax people. I told them, listen, there's no law on earth that says I've got to pay tax, so you know, enjoy yourself. True story. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, they didn't like it when I told them that I didn't have to pay tax. And, and in fact, I'm going to uh, not work anymore so I don't make tax and you guys are getting up on it anyway. You know, I know you know quite a bit about the legal system and how it works and how it's uh, entrapped many souls and it's uh, caused uh, many to really just lose their spirituality because they're really, they've created joinder with... Um, you know, with the legal world, the, the world of commerce, you know. How do you feel about that? And how do you feel that, how do you um, think we can get out of that and raise people's consciousness so they realise that they are divine beings? Well, there's, there's a, a couple of ways to go about it. And <clears throat> in the end of the day, for the whole world over, it would appear that we have to take our world back as a whole, mm. and not just as, um, as little provinces here and there. But those who, who gain their freedom uh, must do as much as they can, and we must do the same, but all to, to spread it, spread that freedom around. Yep. People need to ask more questions of 
of uh, people who claim to have authority over them. And not only ask more questions, but to state blatant demands of them as well, which is our, they demand our freedom. And I don't get many callbacks from the government uh, during my times of demands, you know. Mm -hmm. um, when I tell them I'm not asking and I'm not insisting, I'm telling you this is the case and you will submit. Mm. And, uh, and they go, oh, well, I've got to talk to my superiors. And I said, no, no, you will let me talk to them. And then there's no more correspondence after that. Um, they really don't like to be given the hard questions. Uh, like, I asked for my contract. I said, Where, where's my contract that says that you are, that I'm under your authority? I, I would have to have signed a contract somewhere that gives mm. you my authority. So yep. where is it? Produce it. Yep. And they look at me crazy. Hmm? What contract? Because, <laughs> of course, you don't have a birth certificate. No. No, well, not in my present name. So I don't. Uh, my name was changed at birth to protect me. And uh, my mother done a wonderful thing, I guess. Beautiful. Wonderful, and um, you, uh, you belong to a nation, of course. Uh, you were talking the other day about your, your nation and how you want to invite people into the nation. Now, um, what's the advantage of that and what does the nation stand for? What's it going to achieve? Well, the, the, the name of the nation that we, um, that we have already registered and, and will continue to, to uh, uh, correspond with the rest of the world as is we and Donable and we and Donable only has two translations and one is fire mountains or mountains of fire and the other translation is Mr. Murray's country which is my great 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 granddad and my tribe is called Wa Wadang uh, and most tribal lands over Australia did have a separate name to the actual tribal label, but yeah. a lot of that's been lost all over. And I've been lucky enough to have this rediscovered, or, or spirit had led me through all this. Um, most people would call misery. And to me, misery is just a, a lesson mm. that. Yeah. Um, that if not seen and identified, will keep bringing it back to misery. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So I only got to be in misery once from one aspect of, of what's happening around me, and I've learnt that lesson. And then I put major uh, blocks in the way so that misery doesn't cause me misery anymore. By, by not following that same idea that led me down to that misery, which is firstly, Trust in society or the government. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 And if you trust the government, uh, God bless you. You've uh, got a lot to understand about our our world. Absolutely. Any authority outside of you is no authority. Right. Yeah. yeah. Look, their interests are different to ours. For sure. People keep saying, "Oh, the system's broken," but they're getting the wrong end of the stick. The system's not broken. The system is operating exactly as it was planned to. It's just it's not for us. It's, it's for the elites. It's running perfect. It's running exactly how they want it. You know how I know that? Because they say that I think it's 65 people in the United States own the same amount of wealth as, as I, th I think they said it's about 65% of the people. Or it's 80, no, it's 85 people own the equivalent of the rest of the 85% of the population. <laughs> and that's how the system's meant to operate. It's like a gigantic great big funnel so that you just funnel everything in and it goes down into their throat. So it's not broken, which means that their interests are not the same as us. They're not there to help you. Hello, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Nah. Sorry, I'm not in primary school anymore. I don't believe that shit. Well, we just need to put new drivers in the driver's seat. That's it. Basically, drivers who have been... Uh, don't idea, I don't like the idea of elections because look where they've got us so far. Well, okay, so we're going to have to come up with a whole new way of, of developing leadership. Yeah. 
and leadership in a way that's um, undeniable, uh, accountable, and also loving and spiritual mm. and all the things that that man should be striving towards. That should be in a leader. Um, not just a couple of smart words about the economy. <laughs> Which weren't their words anyway, but they were written yeah, by a yeah. script writer for them. Yeah. And, you know, and as simple as they are, I still don't understand them. Yeah. Like the economic talk, because I, I try not to understand lies. Yeah, for sure. But Good tactic. Good tactic. I don't accept them. Hmm. That's why I don't understand them. The acceptance and understanding. Yeah. Indeed, I, yeah. Sure. I don't accept their lie, that's why I don't understand You're their lie. You're not going to internalise bullshit. No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people would prefer to try and understand something that is not intelligible, which is political talk, Indeed. and yet think they're experts in it. And yeah. they'll recite it all back to you in some sort of, and you sit there, and I hear all those words you're saying, and they appear to be English. I don't have a fucking idea what you're on about. You know, just the other day on Facebook, I'm in this group on Facebook about these laws against the one percent clubs in uh, Queensland. And they're talking about elections. And I said to him, what's the point? Oh, we've got to get this guy and get that guy. I said, right, so you've got five main parties. You've got the Democrats, the Greens, Labor, Liberal, National Party. The difference, death by hanging, death by shooting, death by gas, death by lethal injection, death by electric chair. The methods vary, the outcome's the same. Or another way you can put so it. So you put death by voting on the end of that. But this is all by voting, yeah. but see, look at that. Liberal, Labor, National Democrats Greens, they're all fingers on the same hand. What's elections? I've always thought of elections as we're on the Titanic, we're sailing at full speed in the North Sea, and what we're actually doing is changing the captain backwards and forwards, so the ship's just zigzagging. It does not make yeah. any sense. Still it's, going to the same iceberg, though. Yeah, we're still heading for the iceberg, yeah, yeah. but we're fooling each other. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. And elections only suit the guys who run the system. It doesn't suit us. And, and I said to them, okay, show me when in Australia's history elections fixed anything. So you know what they resorted to? Insulting me. As soon as you know that, see that they're insulting you, you know they got the point. And that's all they got left now. Because elections never fix this country. Because all of us, we're old enough to know better. What have we seen? Ooh, the country's going downhill. It's spiraling. And it's actually getting more and more because the creditors are coming along. Like, like we are saying before, the Chinese board is either 15,000 or 150,000 acres in the Ord River in Western Australia. Some of the most fertile land for growing tropical fruits and vegetables. Why? Because the Chinese are some of the major creditors of this country. So the government's not allowed to say no. And, you know, oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go and elect someone else. You know how dumb that is? That's, have you guys seen the Punch and Judy shows? Yeah. That's like, he's a very naughty boy then. No, he's not. And you know that the guy behind the thing's got his hand up the puppets. Mm -hmm. and, and all the kids sit there and they laugh at Mr. Punch and all this. It's the same guy. <laughs> For what sure. are you doing? Yeah. And you know, Elections, even the Soviet Union had elections. That should tell you something. It should tell you two things. One, elections are dumb. And two, even in the communist system, they still needed the power of the people to validate their system. Yeah. Validate so I said to these people, listen, in criminal law, you got this concept. Accessory before, during and after the fact. So let's just say you voted before Australia invaded Iraq doesn't matter who you voted for. Are you an accessory before, during, and after the fact to all the shit that we did in Iraq? Yeah. Yeah, you are. For sure. Because you're validating the system. Even if you voted mm. for someone else, you're still empowering the system. And to me, it's almost like someone saying, oh, man, the water's too hot. The water's too hot. Stop putting wood in the wood heater. That would be what you'd think. But these guys are pumping energy into a system that's destroying the whole planet. And they're saying, oh, no, 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 we'll elect someone else. Well, who the hell do you think you're going to elect that's going to fix it? God? He doesn't do elections. I've looked on the ballots everywhere and there ain't no God on there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's crazy talk. And you know George Carlin? Sure, yeah. There's, there's a good picture on Facebook about it. And he says, when I hear people talking of political solutions, I know I'm not talking to a serious person. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. 
It does. For sure. Yeah. Still locked yeah. in the uh, literal paradigm. We are really, yeah. we are really um, chartering yeah. new grounds. Really, I feel today because I'm I've been so involved with the the new um, consciousness. We call it sovereignty. Call it what you will, but what's going on is is wonderful, and I see some big, big changes in in consciousness and the way people see this. But it's so vital that we, um, you know, are able to uh, remove ourselves from the system, and like you said, not validate it. Mm. Now, which what if I told you we're not in the system? That's what I see everybody in these law groups saying. I want to get out of the system, but you're not in it. That's the entire reason that you've got an ends legis, a legal entity, a straw man, call it what you want. It's like, say for example, your computer. All of the computers we're using are 12 volt. In Australia, as we know, you've got 240 volts coming out of the wall. Well, what happens if you plug 12 volts into 240 and go click, bang, you don't have a computer now. So inside your power supply, you've got a transformer to step the 240 down to 12 volts. That's what your straw man is. He's a transformer so that a, a, a living being can conduct business in the world of fiction because commerce, law, it's all legal fictions. That's all your straw man is. And he's in the public. You can't be in the public because you're real. You're in the private. You cannot leave the private. You, you might be able to think so and you may be able to give joinder in a court. Oh, are you Santo Bonacci? Yes. That's true and it's not because the, the words are verbally indistinct, because it's not like some cartoon where the, the judge says, are you Santo Bonacci? And you can see a balloon above his head. Oh, no, that's not me, judge. I can see your words are all capitals. But any legal entity, it doesn't matter how they're spelling it, is fictitious. So it doesn't matter. But you're not in the public. You cannot be in the public. And that's part of the reason why they've given you a straw man. They knew what they were doing. Now, there's actually a book, Philip Drew Administrator, written by Edward Mandel House, who was the advisor. I would suggest he's probably the guy up the puppet's clacker for Woodrow Wilson. And he wrote this book, Philip Drew Administrator. And it actually said in the book, what we'll do is we'll corporatize everything and we'll get them to register all their property so it's ours and they can use it and we'll control, they can control it and we'll own it and all this sort of stuff. And they knew to run that system, we had to have corporate identities because if we didn't, how are we going to interact with them? And so we're not in the system. And that's part of the thing that pisses me off with all of these people on the internet. There's a lot of people just talking a lot of crap on the internet and I'm still trying to figure out how to get my fist through the USB port without <laughs> knocking the damn thing out, but it doesn't work. <clears throat> and so they, I just, only way I can explain it is with the transformer deal. Yeah, yeah, keeps us out of the system in the private. Yeah, we we have to be in the private. Sure. And uh, what would you say? How is the being part of the nation going to help? Is that going to extract us totally? Remove? Is that the object to? Uh... I think uh, we're going to move uh, slowly and build strength and on the foundation of this this ID, mm -hmm. so that. So we know that uh, once you get the foundation right of anything, it will stand. Oh yeah. And the foundation of this new nation is me, who has been speaking, um, well to, to give people a, a quick history of it, I didn't know it was my land until recently, maybe five years ago. But. My father was the first researcher for those who call themselves the tribe of the land now, who are not from the land. And they're not of the land, they got no respect for the land whatsoever. They got no spirit. But my father and another mentor of mine, who was the, another researcher for this group, both of these men told me this is not their land, we don't know why they're claiming it, but someone has to tell the truth why they're pointing at me. Uh, I was only about 18 or 19. Mm. And they're pointing at me and saying, someone has to tell the truth because one day the real people will return and they will want what is truly theirs back, which is acknowledgement and their land, their authority. Mm. Uh, land and authority is one the same. Yeah. 
Because what's the point of having authority if you have nowhere to wield it? Well, world history would suggest yeah. that you're correct. All of yeah. the struggles are over what? Land. Yeah, and authority over the land. Yeah. yeah. Um, so about five years ago, I was given a few documents where my last name appeared on, on the history of the land out there prior to white man. So in the, in the upper Yarra Valley, uh, my last name's Murray, and we are the only family from the Upper Yarra Valley, and our tribe, tribal label is Wa Wadang, Wa meaning raven. So we are the Blackbird people, and Wadang meaning people. So Wa, raven, Wadang people. Yep. And, they, and they, that's the tribe, uh, the label of the people, and the land, the, the nation is called We and Donable. Or the place of fire, mountains of fire. And soon when I start teaching uh, our creation story to people, because my creation story predates all. It's right back to the actual first human being born. And that not, not only was I in, uh, in visions in, in my dreaming, given the story of uh, of our human creation, but the world creation as well, and this part of the universe. But so somewhere not far away from here, the site will be known all over the world soon about where the first human being was born, yeah. and it's actually at a site where some of these uh, Egyptian-styled markings. We're on the cave walls as well. Right. And apparently in this cave there is, it's been hidden by water. In the 1860s there was a mythical creature written in the local history that was actually eating the locals. So the, the loggers went down with some dynamite and blew up the cave where this creature was, mythical creature was coming from. And they built a dam over top. Heh. <laughs> and um... But now that creature has, has actually resurfaced out of them caves. I heard this, yeah, the other day. Yeah. Mm. And it's in one of Melbourne's water supplies. Uh, there's two large reservoirs in that feed Melbourne. Both of those are actually free. But two of them I know are definitely guarded heavily by our military. And they reckon that's just because of uh, the terrorism idea now. Yeah. But long before 9-11, the army were there. And I remember them being there, because I've seen them there. We used to do a lot of bushwalking up in the Yarra Valley and, and play games on them as well, thinking they knew the bush. But... So the idea of what... Uh, because you don't have to be an Aboriginal person to be a member of the new nation. It's the world's oldest nation reforming. They're reforming in a new way. Uh, reforming in a way that doesn't um, and won't discriminate your freedom of yourself. Rules are only designed in a way so that Basically, our world is free to do as we wish, providing what you do doesn't harm or hinder innocent people yeah. or innocence of anything. Plants, creatures alike. Yep. Um, and people say to me, oh, what about those who aren't innocent? And I said, well, you won't like the answer, so don't ask that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on, tell me. Next minute, la, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> but... So we, we designed a way um, between a few of us that we had this induction system so that uh, people can come to me and pledge themselves to this new nation. We can formalise it on paper, a three point pledge. You can, you can read it out to me. We can record it either on audio or film for like for archive reasons. And once you've read it out and we understand your pledge and that it's the truth, then you can burn it and send it back to the universe. Because it's not that piece of paper that matters, it's what you said about that it's piece of paper that matters. Mm -hmm. yep. That ain't nothing. 
and that day piece of paper will soon be nothing in the highest courts of the earth. Yep. Yeah. Because our word is going to overrule it all. Yep. For sure. And and without without the backing of seals and paperwork, we'll make sure that the world understands it's our word is the law. Let Just your like word the be old truth. days. Let your word be truth. Yep. Yep. And. Um, so it's just a, a seed just to start, to start sending ideas out there about our, about these ideas of self-freedom and that the less harm you cause in our universe, the actual more freedom you gain through, through perception as mm. well. And you get gifted great perception through, through not wanting anything. The less you want, the more you will receive. For sure, yeah. for sure. The more you withdraw from the world of uh, illusions and desires, the more you gain in perception. There's no doubt yeah. about that. You find the stillness. Yeah. Yes. And the chaos that sits inside the stillness. Yeah. Mm. Chaos begets order, order begets chaos. <laughs> order of <have> chaos, eh? <laughs> mm. That's the old order versus chaos trick again. Yeah. For sure. Look, it sounds like a great idea, Jagger Jagger. I'm, um, I'm really happy that you're around, you know, that um, the, uh, the true original people are waking up themselves, really. We've got some great, great friends, um, you know, on, on our side. Um, I'd like to mention guys like, you know, Mark McMurtry and uh, Jangamara and these guys. Not just like, here either. Yeah, yeah indigenous. right across the world. I shouldn't use that word. I don't like it myself. But the Aboriginal people of all the other nations, that Hawaii has taken back their sovereignty. Yeah. That's not known in, in, the, in the media, public, yeah. but they've taken back their sovereignty. Well, maybe earthlings around the earth who, who are living these great truths, maybe we should just call them truthlings. And yeah. there's truthlings all over the world keeping the truth alive for, for where they are and, and, yeah. and who they are. Um, well, one of the, the big ideas behind it and one of the ways of, of uh, building up the, the nation, because it's, it's not a nation in the way other people see it. Indeed. And there's going to be very little material nationality to it. It'll be a nation of, of a spiritual presence. So no doubt we'll have uh, members of our nation living 3,000 kilometres away. Um, and we can provide them with a support base of sorts today in, a, in this modern world. But uh, we'd like them to come home to the, to the site every now and then, come in and... It's good energy there too. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Every there. time I go up to his place, up in Hillsville, I always, don't always say to you that energy here is good because he's got two ley lines crossing at the back of the first house. And I can sense the energy. It's very, very relaxing. It's clean energy. Depends on what you're after. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, for us, it's clean energy. I've had, I've had people good. come in, uh, what we call uh, spirit thieves or, or wisdom thieves. Yeah. Looking to steal something to go away and call it their own. Yes. And you, you ha it, ha it happens. It does. But do they get burned at my place? Oh, yeah. They, they go away a little bit choking up and... No, they not sure what they tasted. For sure, they won't last there. No. Uh, yeah, the um, the pretenders will uh, burn out, and yeah. uh, that's that's been already said in many many sacred scriptures. You know, yeah, when yeah. the the coming destruction by fire, you know, conscious fire, because that's what fire is, consciousness, wow. light. Uh, many will not be able to withstand. You know, the impact of it. Yeah. Well, oddly enough, you know, my my tribe is. Is Ra, Raven, Blackbird people. That's interesting, Raven. It is. Ra, the bird of Ra. Very interesting, because the ravens are sacred to my ancestors, the Danes. It's a symbol of Odin, because he's got Hugin and Munin at his sides, thought and memory. Mm. Plus, it's also a symbol of death, and being in the Valkyrie would take the dead away. But also, how about this? Do you know the prophecy of the ravens in the Tower of London? When the, all the ravens leave, the monarchy will fall. So ravens are very, a very, very interesting bird, and they're one of the most intelligent birds. You point a stick at a raven, he'll sit there and look at you. You point a gun at him, he's gone. He's in the next county already. And, and the nation, 
we in Donable Mountains of Fire. Yeah. Because the, the creation story that I have to give to the world is about the first human being born. And what, what that human contained because of that uh, union between universe and earth. And even more interesting is who mum and dad is of the first human being. Yeah. Born. Yep. And and my people made the best fire sticks in the country. We got yeah. this one particular piece of wood that only grows in the in the hills or area. And it was the primo piece for the top piece of your fire stick. And that's been found in archaeological digs in southern Queensland. You know, uh, predating the uh, the invasion in WA as well. That same piece of wood only grows in my people's land. Ha. Mm. So, so we made the best fire well. sticks as well. So not only was the land called fire and the raven not a blackbird people. We are the we are the blackbirds that will bring down Babylon using the fire, which is the spirit of all men. Mm. And that's where the power is. is. That's where the fire is. Inside the belly of people. Yeah. And I've been t I was lucky enough to be told all of my life, you make sure you keep that flame alive in that belly. Yeah, the solar plexus. Yeah. And don't let no one extinguish it. In fact, this is where... This is corresponding to the sign of Virgo, the bread basket, the house of bread in astrology, the belly. And um, those fires within, they are the, um, the Christic fires that are born once a month when the moon is in out the solar sign. Yeah. The, the moon generates a seed. And both men and women have this womb. It's a spiritual womb. Mm -hmm. And by looking after the oil in the cerebrospinal system, Eventually it cleanses and purifies and vibrates and climbs and climbs and climbs up Jacob's ladder, the spinal column. And eventually that fire that was generated here in the bread basket gets harvested when it crosses the medulla oblongata, crosses the vagus nerve where the crucifixion of the Christ happens. And then voila, you've got the oil reaches the optic thalamus. Three days later, pineal gland stands up erect and you have the blood of the Christ is produced rather than dimethyltryptamine. You've got some supercharged DMT going on in here. And it actually activates all the dormant brain cells. You get a halo, you know, you get ascension, um, and you get what's called, um, you know, the, the cosmic consciousness. And this is what the system is designed to prevent. To prevent. So you yes. just mentioned two, two things, a house of bread, and the Christ consciousness. Do you know what the correspondence between those is? Do you know what the house of bread is in Hebrew? Bethlehem, which is translated into English as Bethlehem. Yep. And of course, that's where they say Jesus was born, Bethlehem. Yes. So it's like uh, the house of bread. Of course, the fact is I like bread. Bread, yeah. does, bread doesn't like me too much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Just thought I'd throw yeah. that in there. Well, that's, that's exactly how it is, you know, because that little um, seed in the Greek system is called chrism. Mm. Or, well, actually, that's in your Sante's uh, anatomy. But uh, in the Greek system, rather, it's called Christos. Okay. And, and that's the oil. It's, yeah. it's the cerebro oil. It's like a, a gassy oil substance. And it's like the blood. You know, if, um, if we keep it clean and alkalized, it will ascend. The ascension sure. will happen automatically. So once the oil has returned to the optic thalamus... The that is how and why the people need to keep clean. That's what they need to, to know. Mm. Yeah, clean, moderate habits. How many people have you ever spoken to and said, oh, you need to be alkaline? Uh, what? They got the pool bloody alkaline so the bacteria doesn't grow in the pool water when they're swimming in it and they get meningitis, but they don't know they've got to keep your body alkaline. You know, uh, and you met Andrew the other night. He's, he's who I stayed with when I came here to Victoria, and him and his wife both had the flu very bad. The daughters, two daughters caught it, and it was like just that much short of pneumonia. And they said, oh, you're going to have to be careful. I said, no, I don't have to be careful. I don't get viruses. Sure enough, didn't get it. Why? My body's alkaline. And mo how many people do you talk of, uh, sorry, how many people do you talk to that know you've got to have the body alkaline? Not a lot. Mm. True, basic, just basic yeah. things. Yeah, um, and that's why the ground is the city. 
Yeah, that's right. Earth is the acid and air is the alkaline. In fact, that's what alkali means. It comes from the Arabic word, which is father fire. Allah, kali, fire. And so the fire against the earth, motion against rest. Rest is acidic and Saturn represents the acidic. And in fact, in astrology, he's the, um, the planetary body of acid. Whereas, say, Jupiter is the uh, planetary body of sweet fruits. We just had some watermelon before. Oh, yeah, when, yeah, when you have sweet, you give grace to Jupiter. When you have bitter, Mars. When you have acidic, that's Saturn. And of course, that's why you've got the war between Horus and Set. Because Al-Kali, Father Fire, is Horus, the Sun. The sun. Yeah. And Saturn is Set, who is acidic. And the war is happening in biochemistry as well as, sure. as above. The universe demands balance, and they show it to you in very, very strange ways. You, have you seen um, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith? Episode yeah, 3. Yeah, for sure. It's funny, because this one's a very good analogy for about good and bad as well, because it's, that's all about certain points of view. I don't believe in good and evil, and people think I'm some sort of wacko. I could be right, but I still don't believe in good and evil. But in Star Wars, like the first three of this new trilogy, well, first three of the whole fucking trilogy, mm -hmm. Um, the whole story is Anakin Skywalker is the uh, chosen one, prophesized one, who's going to bring balance to the Force. And he does. And the Jedi go, yeah, but not for long, because how does he bring balance to the Force? He wipes out 10,000 Jedi, because the, the Force has gone all the way to the light. And the universe demands equilibrium. It's physics. It, it, it does not like things to be out of sync. And how... How does the universe usually bring things back into sync when it's out of sync? A cataclysm of some description. So Anakin helps to kill off 10,000 Jedi. You know, mm. Darth Sidious said, execute order 66. <laughs> then we can get to the good and the evil thing. It depends on what sunglasses you've got on. You know, I always, always put it to people that, depending on what filters you're looking through, depending on what you see. Now, if you're a Sith Lord, and you just wiped out the Jedi, that's good. But if you're a Jedi and you're a survivor and you just had all of your order wiped out, that's bad. But it's the same event. It is what it yeah. is. Good and evil depends on what you're Yeah, what wearing. you get out of it. Well, it okay. depends on what lenses you've got. That yeah. means it's reliant on you to make a judgment. And what, again, we'll use the Old Testament. What does it say in there? Judge not lest ye be judged. Because you're doing this. You know, you know, you're pointing a finger and you've got three pointing back. That's the Celtic rule of three. And you're not making a judgment on someone else. You're making a trifold judgment on yourself. Yeah, well, well like, I used to get in a lot of fights in the streets when I was a young buck. Yeah. <coughs> and, uh... You used to and, win and, a few, and, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's what I was getting to. The fact that, uh... I got flogged this year. But I stood up and said, yeah, I won that flogging. <laughs> so I never lost a fight. I mean, any time people had to pick me up. Yeah. And it was, it, it took away the sting of it. It took away the revenge ID. Because I'd won, even though I was a bit, yeah, a bit busted up. And yeah, I won, yeah. Okay. <laughs> For sure. So it was a, a, the inner battle that I won. Indeed. Yeah. Over myself. Well, as the Muslims call it, jihad. Yeah. Yeah. The real jihad, the internal struggle over your own imperfections. Mm. Yep. The only war that we can fight that's worth waging is the war on our own in, internal imperfections. The spiritual war. We may yep. we may lose a battle, but we yep. always win the war. Because the external world is a reflection of the internal world. If you correct the internal world, the external world becomes corrected automatically. Well, I think we're doing a good job, and I think we can uh, also try... Well, not try, but uh, keep going because there's a few more things that need corrected, <laughs> oh, yeah. which which indicate that uh, you know we do need uh, to correct what's what's within. That's for sure. Well, the thing is, it's like as you know, and Brendan knows. He didn't know me then, but as you know, in my past of what the viewers would call neo-Nazi or a white supremacist, and I hated everything in the world Jewish. Once I realised where I was going, and I let go of that hatred. That changed my internal world big time. Now, if you had said to me five years ago, right, in 2014, you'll be sitting in Melbourne and that will be your new home and you'll be in an Aboriginal tribe 
and you'd be really good friends with the Jager Jager, I would have said to you, fuck, I know, man, what drugs are you on? <laughs> and mm. yet here I am. And I actually like this world better than the old world. <clears throat> and here you are acknowledging that to the world. Yeah, indeed. And, and the, the filters that I used to have on, you were miserable all the time because all, everything you saw was negative. And you take the goggles off, and it's like, holy shit, you can see color again. So you, you, correct, you start correcting your internal world, and the way you see the world is different, and you can help to bring things change. Now, one of my friends on Facebook, and in real life as well, even though I haven't met her yet, very, very nice lady called Noah. Hello, Noah. She runs Israel Loves Palestine on Facebook. And then when I nearly died in October, she was distraught. And she's Jewish, she's an Israeli Jewish lady. And she said to me a long time ago, people like you give me hope. And I'm like, okay, well, she's just found out that I used to be this. And, and I said, well, how does that work? And she said, because if you can go from being an enemy to being our friend, that means all of the ones who aren't extreme can. I thought, okay, I see where that's gone. And I don't even see her as Jewish or Israeli. I just see her as Noah. But, you know, sometimes when you want to explain a point, you've got to use a label. When our internal world starts correcting, the way we address in, and interact with the external world corrects. And if you go and look at my Facebook list, I've got I just over 800 friends now, and you know, probably 750 of them are federal agents. <laughs> but seriously, I don't know what percentage of those would be Jewish, but it's a very, very high percentage. And some of them bring a lot to the table for me. One of them's a rabbi in San Francisco. Um, Rabbi Gershon, and um, I've learned a lot from him. Yeah, absolutely. You're and that's, so what happened, I let go of my hatred, and I had a whole new world open up in front of me. I'm very, very familiar with the Arab world, the, the Islamic world, but I had the Jewish world open up in front of me, and I'm now free to explore it without any sort of forbidden areas or anything, and it's a fascinating world. And you know what's funny? Jewish people are very welcoming. And there's an old story that, oh, you know, if you get in with the Jews, oh, that great. Well, it's not a story. Jewish people are very accepting. And um, it's a fascinating world. They've got a fascinating language. They've got a fascinating way of looking at things. And passionate about it. Very. And the Jewish tribe is, is in possession of, they are one of the most knowledgeable people in spirituality, even though they're fo following the Abrahamic system. Their knowledge and spiritual power is immense. Well, I think you know if you talk about the Abraham, there's Central Australian stories about Abraham and where he was born. He was actually born in the Valley of the Palms in the desert of Australia. Where's that at? In, in Central Australia, there's, there's two valleys that have palm trees. Yeah, there's one. Oasis, King is, Valley and Palm Valley. That's, is that the one that's south of Darwin? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not far from, from between Alice Springs and the Rock. Yeah, I think. Well, I, I got offered, I, when I lived in the desert, I got offered a job, a responsibility in the tribe, and a wife. Yeah. And if I was to accept those free, come back to the free again, and that like a pledge. Yeah. If I was to accept those free points and pledge myself to their tribe, then the old matriarch of the tribe was going to take me out to the Fink River and show me the footprints, sandal prints fossilised in the mud. And who the Adenta of Central Australia says that that's where Jesus walked across the country. And I know there's sandal prints in broom. You got like the broom and the sandal yeah. prints in amongst dinosaur tracks coming up yeah. out, of the, out of the coastline. Yeah, some of those in Arizona too, actually in the print. Yeah. 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 Like old sandal prints or human footprints, you mean? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because time, yeah, time isn't as we, we feel it in this physical manifest. And what do they call Abraham in the Aboriginal tradition? Well, I think up there they've got names for him. But, yeah, there's, there's rumours he was born at uh, either the base of the rock or in King's Canyon up there. Yeah. That only goes to show that uh, syncretism is universal. Sure. It's, it's well, the same. Because it's natural. Mm. It is. That's why it's universal. It's natural. 
Yeah. That's like saying gravity is more in Germany than it is in Italy. It's like, well, actually it might be slightly, yeah. but, but generally gravity is un universal as well. And bullshit is actually natural too, but <laughs> we, we also have to deal with that. Yeah, well. So we have to deal with these things of the natural states, which is it's natural for humans to crap on. Yeah. So we have to devise but a not way us. We don't do that. of teaching them how not to crap on or why not yeah. to crap on. And I, I love a challenge. Yeah. Um, you got to be crazy not to. Eh? If you're not challenging yourself, um, but we also you know, people like us. We need we need solitude. Yet we still need people. And there's a time and place and a season for everything. Mm. And the hardest thing and the golden age is is there. It's already in time allotted to us. The hardest thing is transitioning from this way of life to that way of life. It's a transition that's going to be the hardest bit. Yeah. Working out how to get there because it's already there for us. Yeah, because obviously there is a, a group, or there's a select uh, few that are so ready for a big spiritual transformation of this planet. And yet there are the masses that are lagging behind. So the transition is going to be uncomfortable for some. Yeah, that's good. Well, we, we have a high population on Earth, but uh, I believe, and I've got faith in humanity, uh, some people would think that's crazy in their own. It can be. No, absolutely, it's it's proper. But I, I know that the universe is far more powerful than humans. Yeah, indeed. So they're going to receive it whether they want it or not. Exactly. Yeah, they're going to receive something. So it's what they do with it that, that matters, I guess. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely um, counterproductive and energy wasting to be negative at all about the final, the end of the matter, because everybody's looking for something one day to make them happy. Yeah. Well, not everybody, but um, this seems to be the way, the way of the world. And so the more the, uh, we focus on that, um, that end point, the more we you know, sort of suffer, I guess, but it's now, you know, that end is yeah, now. Is we now. wrote the script and in the now, it's all good. The yeah. Hopi Indians taught this. They said, we are the ones that we are waiting for. Do everything in honor in the meantime. So you can't fail. And the, the soul is immortal, you know. Indeed. So um, it's, it's all an event that is happening in the now. And, and live life. A little bit adventurous by putting away itineraries a little bit in your life and going in the free flow of the universe and and, uh, and again you get so much more given to you. Yeah. Like just on the spur of the moment get an idea, go and do it. And and have an adventure. Yeah. yeah. And I love little especially comedy adventures. Yeah. Yeah. Because the light. I've done a few of those myself. <laughs> Com comedy comedy and humour is a great tool against the darkness. Yeah. yeah. Smiling, laughing. It's not possible to be negative while you're laughing. Well, yeah. <clears throat> it depends on what you're laughing at and who you're laughing at, I guess. So. True. I've never um, allowed doubt to um, to cloud my mind about the final end, that it will be yeah. it will be good. Yeah. You know, despite... Well, it, it'll seem, seem darker at first. Yeah. And it'll seem as though we're not going to win. But every great movie, the hero... Uh, I'm falling off here and then bugged up, but yeah, we're still in the last fight. minute. And that's us. Yeah. Uh, we may get mangled up a bit, but we're going to knock out the opposition and, and take our world back. Yeah. And there's no ifs and buts. It's just a matter of time for the rest of the people to understand that and and join it and follow in, realign their spirit with the universe. Yeah. And with that, the uh, and the dream and consciousness of the earth is coming in the collective now, and there's these all different dream worlds where you're going to access and meet people in the consciousness now. And it's not a dream, but it's an actual place that yeah, exists in here, out here. Um, and there's, there's other worlds and realms almost about to overlap in our reality because they, you know, we're, I, I still believe we're all at midnight. And we're going to stay at midnight for a long time. Because I think they want everyone to think we're still in the 11th hour. We still give them time. Yeah. We are out of time. We're, you know, we're on midnight and it's time to fight. And people say, oh, yeah, but we don't want violence. Who said anything about violence? I said, fight. Mm. 
The fine fight. Yeah. The good work. Yeah. People are distracted with jobs. Why would you want to be just over broke yeah. when you can do work? Fight, yeah. fight lies of truth. Um, and someone said to me, oh, but you, you've got a big mouth and you can talk it loud over people. And that's, <laughs> should you they give them the <laughs> I said, well, sometimes when so many lies are spoken, you have to yell the truth. Indeed, of course you do. Yeah. Um, what happens at dawn in, in Islamic countries? They send the guy up to the minaret, the muezzin, and he gives the avan. And where's he go? Right up the top of the minaret, because they didn't have loudspeakers then. Mm. And he gives that van and calls people to prayer. He's right up above everyone and he's loud. Yeah. Allowed. That's it. Yeah. Allah allowed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's um yeah, so it, it's really up to the individual in it out there to to see within themselves what they want for our earth and I see the world as one. I don't see it as many. Many problems to fix up, but there's only one way to fix them, and that's through through truth and development of, of the truth. That at first it may seem like it's stripping down the, the civil rights of these modern people, but in fact it's, it won't be. It'll be about containing the ignorance rather than stripping down the civil rights. The civil rights is something that government gives to you. Why would you want those? Yeah, no. Because our rights can... Freedom. Our rights were given to us before government existed. Anything mm. the government can give you can take it away. It's all revocable. Yeah. I know when government tell me, oh, we can't revoke that. I said, no, I don't believe for one minute. Mm. I said, everything is unrevocable. Everything is breakable. Yeah. Everything is overthrowable. And they look at me, oh, you're crazy, man. <laughs> it's just too big. The system's too big. I said, no, it's not big enough yet. <laughs>